Plain mentioning the stock market, the Dow Jones Industrial Average down some 360 points at one point today, but it didn't end there. The Dow finished up 114 points, closing at 25,942. The S&P 500 up 10, ending at 2881. The Nasdaq up 6 to finish the day at 7,916. Market analysis now, Jim Lowell, Chief Investment Officer at Advisor Investments and editor of FidelityInvestor.com, joining us from the newsroom this evening. Hi, Jim. Hey, Brian. All right, so as they walked out of those trade negotiations, smiling faces, hands being shaken, Mnuchin saying that we had some progress, nothing more than that. So what do you take away from this? Well, look, even before our market reacted this morning, we saw the Chinese stock market, the Shanghai index, uh, close up 3%, 3.1% to be exact. That was ahead of the Trump tweet saying that uh, we could be patient, no need to rush. That was ahead of uh, Mnuchin's comments about uh, trade talk uh, discussions being constructive. So I think already this market is beginning to understand that the negotiations are going to be ongoing. Uh, yes, they didn't, uh, they didn't materialize when maybe the market had priced in that they would, but there's still deal making to be done and it looks as if uh, deal making will get done. And in the meantime, while the tariffs were imposed at 12.01 a.m. Uh, this morning our time, a lot of the goods that are being shipped from China won't reach our shores for another three weeks or so. And that means that those tariffs won't go into effect on those goods until they hit our shores. So there's a there's sort of a soft few week period in here in which uh, more negotiations could take place. Is that the chess game that the administration <laughs> is playing that will say tariffs <coughs> kick in now, but we know it takes three weeks and gives us some more breathing room? Is this an administration, Brian, that can even know how to play chess? I, I'm not sure about that, but I, but I do think that one of the things that they understand is that uh, no administration has stood up to China on, on trade issues. We were going to get to this point sooner or later. We're there now. Maybe we're not uh, there in the most diplomatic manner, but I think China uh, at least has, uh, has shown the seriousness of the situation because they have been willing to negotiate. So we'll see how these deals go. All right, let's talk about the big IPO today. Uber putting out its stock for the first time, and it kind of went the same way Lyft went, and that was down. That's right, Uber down uh, over 7% today, so a little bit of a flat tire on day one. Just last night, we talked about how long-term investors might want to go for the ride, but, but near-term traders probably wanted to stay curbside. It's going to be fairly volatile. Overall, I, I think investors who understand that Uber is not a ride-sharing service, it is a big data company with a ride-sharing service wrapped around it, are, are going to probably be able to stay the course of what's likely to be some very volatile years for, the, for this new IPO. And something that I think a lot of people don't pay attention to, you know, the drivers went on strike ahead of this on Wednesday, but those drivers could go away because Uber's put, what, a billion dollars into autonomous cars? Absolutely. So the driverless car trend plays right into Uber's uh, long-term and probably even intermediate-term strategy. So those who uh, misprice the fact that if Uber drivers suddenly become named employees will spell the end of Uber, I think just aren't looking far enough down the road, and I think Uber is. All right. What do we got coming up next week? It's going to be another week where we get very few reports, business confidence, has uh, builders confidence, retail sales, not enough for, to really countermand what I suspect will be another volatile event-driven news week. All right, Jim Lowell, Advisor Investments. Have a good weekend. You too, Brian.